and welcome back we're back in our trx4 and i went through the scan data capture uh, from our scan tool when we first received the truck uh, going through all the original faults and trouble codes it was throwing and comparing that with the repairs that we've done thus far and since we had the door apart, or both doors apart still, and haven't put the internal covers back on, one of the items that was in that report was for the defrost circuit in the uh, side mirror on the driver's side was showing either a open or a short uh, to ground or short to uh, battery positive, I believe it was. So looking over the connector view and the troubleshooting steps for troubleshooting, as they call it, let's see, check driver, mirror, heater circuit, and C160 driver, mirror, heater return circuit for basically, a, I believe it's a short or open. And what they have you do is take connector C2 do a resistance reading between pins three and four and this can be hard for you to see I, I do apologize that's just they cram these diagrams under a single page if you look at that there connector c2 pins three and four come down now it's going to say driver side but i looked it's the same on both sides whether the connector and the pin layout's the same whether you're on driver or passenger uh, at least in my case you see that says external mirror outside. You'll see pins three and four come off of connector two and go to that little, what's, what looks to be a squiggly line. What that is, that is the resistive heating element that is in that side mirror. So I'm already probed into connector C2. Uh, once again, pins three and four. And again, I am front probing. You just you have to be careful when you do this that you don't use too big of a probe and space that pin spacing out and cause a fitment issue when you go to plug it in. The best thing to do, and I'm waiting to get my shipment in, is to get some wire piercing probes that'll just gingerly pierce the wire. You can measure from there and then just put a little dab of, of liquid electrical tape when you're done. But we've got our pins laid out, pins three and four. We've got our meter set on resistance. It's just going to auto range for us. In order to make this a bit easier, I'm just going to grab a couple of alligator clips, clip it onto our test leads, so I can hold the camera and make this uh, adjustment or make this reading at the same time. Now, according to all data, they say that the resistance should be below 9 ohms. Now, we're a little high on this one. We're about 12 and a half ohms, but you can see that we're steady. Now, according to our troubleshooting steps, if the resistance is below 9 ohms, no, then it says to repair um, the driver mirror heater circuit or the c10 driver mirror heater return circuit for an open now we're not all that high yeah we're a few ohms higher than spec dun, dun, so nine to about three and a half ohms higher than spec and that could just be the age of the mirror uh within the heater circuit itself but remember we're not getting the fault code on the passenger door for the heater circuit uh, in that uh, side mirror so let's jump over the driver's side and then watch what happens I'll bring you back in a second and welcome back so I got you here on the driver's side same connector C2 pins 3 and 4 remember on the driver's side is where it's throwing the fault code for the heater circuit saying that it's open or shorted and we're going to do that same resistance reading. 
going to be a little bit off because we're going through some extra cabling here plus the test leads on the meter yeah let me let me reverse that this one this one does act funky and i'll show you what i mean see if you can catch it see that number 13.92 but look at the m to the right of it 14 mega ohms and climbing 15 mega ohms still climbing so yeah this heater circuit inside this mirror has got an issue almost 16 mega ohms so remember on the passenger side we saw 12 and a half ohms not mega ohms with this being mega ohms it's seen a dramatic increase in resistance on that heater circuit that's why when the module is doing its test you know it's 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 seeing what it thinks to either be an open circuit or i'm sorry a shorted circuit and or an open circuit so you can see we're almost up to 18 mega ohms and it's still climbing uh again obviously we shouldn't be in the mega ohms range so you 3.2 you see it cycling yeah it's just doing some really weird stuff inside that mirror anyway we shouldn't be at the mega ohms scale so either this wiring pigtail has got a short in it and what i can do is just kind of roll the wiring here a bit Make sure that we don't have an intermittent short with inside this wiring harness going to that mirror. Or it's just that resistive heating element itself is probably corroded and has a short in its windings. Okay. Now what I've done, and this is going to be interesting, let's see if we can pull this off, is rather than order an entire mirror, I've ordered just the front glass, uh, just an aftermarket piece of front glass because that resistive heating element is built into the same assembly that houses the glass. So that should take care of our issue. So when that comes in and it's scheduled to be in here, it'll be moments for you, but a couple of days for me, then we're gonna go through the process and figure out how we can best get this glass out of here I get this casing popped apart and see if we can attempt to replace again just this glass piece on here and then do another resistive measurement and make sure that we've uh, we fixed our issue that we're more closer to that 9 10 ish ohms that it's looking for to, to validate this circuit so with that being said once that part comes in I'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back. You can see that we got our side view mirror taken off our driver's door following our previous video segment in which we did a resistance check and found this heating element, the defroster element that sits behind the back glass to be bad. Also, we're getting a code for it because we're going through the remainder of our codes or if you remember, our scan tool showed us when we first got this truck. And you can see that we have the rear clamshell taken off of the mirror this time uh, now there are several revisions of this mirror several types of this mirror so you kind of have to take this video with a grain of salt it it may be your type of mirror setup or it may not but I just kind of have our puddle light held in place here Now, normally the puddle light is attached to the rear clamshell and it's got that release pin that we looked at earlier, as well as it should have a Phillips screw in this one, but it does not. If you remember the previous video, somebody had already replaced the one on the driver's side. But in order to get this clamshell off, you've got three screws and a release pin right there. So you got two, if you're looking at the mirror from the back, It'll be uh, kind of two here on the left and one there on the right, as well as the release pin. And what I found that you could do, and if you've got uh, screwdrivers that are kind of bent in an S, it, it makes this easier. But if you've got a longer set of star bits like this one here, you can tilt the mirror manually 
like we did to get to the Phillips screw when we were doing just the puddle light. And kind of push the mirror this way, push the mirror underneath to be able to kind of get at those screws at an angle. Enough of an angle, at least, we were able to get behind them and turn them and get them to spin out. Now, it doesn't really, the only one I've noticed that you can kind of even get a direct shot at. You'll have to forgive the camera work because that's the, right there in that corner. So if you're looking at this mirror with it facing you like it is here, it's that top corner. You can get to that one pretty straight. But the two here on the sides, even when you manipulate the mirror, the best I was able to do was get a screwdriver kind of on the head of that, um, that star screw uh, at an angle. But I was able to get enough perch, on, perch, perch on it to get that screw to turn and come out. Once it was out, what you have left is that plastic tab that cooks into the bottom corner here. So once again, you can just push your mirror up. Well, up, not bottom in any corner, but it's kind of hard to do because I'm losing some rigidity. There we go, because I have the back clamshell off. But you can push your mirror up, get into the space underneath, be able to push this tab out and then with that these three screws and this tab gone this clamshell comes out now keep in mind that if you haven't removed your phillips screw for your puddle light you'll have to reach in as you get the clamshell to separate and unplug your three wire connector and this should come off as one assembly so it will also make it easier to get to that puddle light as well and change it out if you had to so with this out, what I'm looking over now, I'm going to have to puzzle over this a little bit, is figuring out which clips, and from what I can see here, you've got a set of clips here at the top, this corner, and a set of clips right there on that corner. It looks like I can push in on both of those, basically get the top part of this mirror to unclip from this plastic holder which has your motor in it that controls your your tilt uh, up and down and left and right to be able to come off of basically this motor mount and then once it's done the bot the mirror should fall forward and we can unclip the bottom so I'm going to work on this for a little bit and then I'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so just to show you what we got going on here Remember, there's two wires here on the side that go to your heating element. We're going to get those disconnected here in a short. But yes, those tabs up at the top, there and there, we were able to get to pop in. And as you can see, we can now grab this mirror and basically just bend it forward. Now that we've got it forward, just going to disconnect our heating element or defroster element, however you want to call it. And then all we're going to do now is get our bottom clips unclipped. You can see it's almost there. Now that it's tilted forward, should be able to push forward on these clips. Get them to disengage. Yep, just like that one. And we should be able to do the same with our opposite one. Again, you got you kind of have to forgive the rapidly shifting camera angles here. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to get two hands in it, but you can see those bottom clips, and I'll show you on the replacement how they just kind of horseshoe in or. Uh, kind of like a, they look like a C where they'll just come in and clip onto the bottom ones here. And we just have to kind of push on this mirror. There we go. And just to show you that. See those bottom ones just kind of come over and clip onto these bottom holes here on your motor assembly. And then these top ones here clip in place and, and hold it secure. You'll see two metal pieces here. These are 
kind of springs if I were to, were to hazard a guess they apply some tension to this mirror as it's moving up down left and right uh, more than likely to help it just kind of return uh, to where it needs to be and aid in movement but now that we got our broken mirror well not broken mirror but at least broken heating element out of our mirror Go ahead and put this on our bench. We've got our meter set to ohms. Let's just get some alligator clips to make this connection a bit easier. So that's the connection points to the re resistive heating element inside the mirror. Let's see there. You can see that we're reading 4.0 ish mega ohms, which is not good. Should not be that high of a resistance. So let me get the new mirror and uh, we'll do the same check and I'll bring you back in one moment. And we'll come back. So you can see we got a replacement mirror. The mirror did come with two new, these little spring clips. I'm just putting them back in in the same order in which we, these ones are facing. So old mirror, new mirror. Let's go ahead and take a, resistant, a new resistance measurement on the new mirror. Compare it with our old. There you go, 7.4 ohms. So you can see much, much lower resistance value, which means this heating element circuit is more correct than I would say with this one. Now, all data, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. All data says you're looking for about 9 ohms on that circuit. Anything higher, they see it as an issue. So we should be good with the, the 7.3 and 7.4 ohms that we're getting here. That should make the diagnostics happy when the, you go, go to turn the key on and it uh, test runs test circuit or checks all the um, circuits within the door itself. Door lock switches, you name it. Uh, this is one of those checks. Now, it won't cause a check engine light to set per se, but you may get a message on the dashboard letting you know that the heating element's going bad, or you may not see it at all. We're able to see it because we have a scan tool that can can, get, can interrogate all the modules to let us know that you know we're throwing a fault code for this. Well, again, which just kind of let us let us do troubleshooting as to why we're replacing it. But you can see the mirror is pretty close to the factory one. And I'll put a link in the description, but I want to say this was about $32 and change for the mirror. Again, that came with the springs versus, you know, I think uh, the lowest I was able to find a set of these was about 150 to 160 bucks for the entire housing. So and to each their own. Um, I mean, it is a viable option just to go ahead and replace, you know, the entire arm. But we can see that we got a much better resistance reading on this one. Let's see if we can get this reinstalled. Just take our old one, go off to the side. And the first thing that we're gonna need to do is to get it clipped back into our brace. So what I'm going to do is feed the bottoms in first, basically fold the mirror completely straight, get the bottoms to come in, fold the mirror up, and then snap the top pieces in place. And I am actually looking for whatever I did with the tripod, because I want to get you guys back on the tripod to better show you this. So let me do that. Let me hunt down what I did with the tripod. I'll get you up on the desk here. And uh, that'll give you a little bit better view as to what I'm trying to do here. One moment. And welcome back. So hopefully I got you in a, in a tripod. Let me 
straighten you out a little bit. There we go. Got you zoomed in. And what you're looking at, obviously, is the back of the assembly. This is our new mirror. And what I want to do first is I just want to check the pin fitment on this electrical connector. Make sure that is nice and tight. There we go. Okay, so that clipped in. I don't know if you heard that. There we go. That's clipped in. Okay, good. I mean, they they do get exposed to quite a bit of elements just being outside. And what I'm going to do is take those bottom tabs we were talking about. I'm going to hold the bottom of this motor assembly. What I'm doing is I'm bending these metal tabs a little bit out of the way because they were hitting the top there, but they need to be behind it. So hopefully you can see that. I've got the bottom tabs kind of, again, in and acting like a hinge. And then we're going to rotate this forward and see how far off we are with our clips. Okay, so we're in here. We may have to come forward with this mirror so you can see that clip right there. Let's see, I don't think it's in all the way. There we go. Now that one's in. We need to do the same thing to the other side. Again, I'm just grabbing the top corner of this mirror and then supporting the motor assembly with this hand. There we go. That other bottom clip is in. Now if we rotate this forward, okay, so our wiring is still connected, let's see, I can tell you right now, that's one thing I already do not like what I see. In the same spots, they look to be the same length. But these metal tabs don't look like they're going to hit the same spots, provide that tension. What I'm going to do is I want to bend them forward slightly so you can hopefully see what I'm doing. I'm just taking these tabs and bending them forward a little bit because they look to be a little bit too far back. And what I'm doing is Hopefully you can see where that tab is. I'm getting this tab to make contact with this plastic tab on this arm here. Again, because I'm wanting it to, once it snaps in place, to offer some tension on this mirror, much like the OEM clips did. And it's, it's almost there. A little bit more forward and a little bit more forward, and I think we got it. Okay, there you go. I don't know if you heard that. I'm just snapping the top tabs in place, these square ones. See that down in there. Again, just taking the front of the mirror, supporting the back of the motor assembly. And there we go. Just popping them back in. So you can see that we got our glass in now. We've got an electrical connector done for our heat, for our, I should say our defrost. And if we look at our metal pins, I should say our little spring clips or little spring arms, whatever you want to call them. You can see that down in there. That that is now touching that um, tab that comes off that 
this back motor mount assembly. I'm just going to check the other side here for the same thing. You should be able to see that, yep, that's now touching. So we should have a little bit of resistance up there, just like we did when we had the factory mirror in here. Now this comes the fun part. Is reassembling the back clamshell. What I want to do first is I'm going to do another resistance check on the two wires that we know that make up the heating element in that circuit. Just like when we tested it outside, I'm going to test it in again here. Uh, let's see, I don't think my meter probes are thin enough. Let me grab some AES Wave uh, test leads and I'll be right back. One moment. And welcome back. Well, I was in the process of putting the mirror in, as you know, and I'm just doing some final resistance checks, and I found something interesting. Is that as I was playing around with the wiring harness here, with the mirror disc, I was getting a, a high mega ohm re reading again, just like we did with the bad heating element on the back of the factory mirror. Well, as you can see, we've got our meter hooked in to just the, what is the defrost wires for the, uh, again, left hand side uh, mirror, left hand side side mirror. And after looking at the cabling a bit, hopefully you can see that. That's the case of the green crusties right on the two wires that make up that circuit. You can see there's a pair of ground wires here that are kind of on top of each other. And then the, that's one of the heater, cir heater circuits. That's the other wire for the other heater circuit. And let me get you turned over to the meter here. And you can see that there's there should be nothing on there. It should be an open circuit because that mirror is disconnected at this point. And as I play around with this cable you'll see that you'll see that meter is starting to jump so what's happening is there is a, some corrosion on this pin that's bridging the gap so to speak onto one of the control pin onto the either the control pin or the return for the heater circuit. So what I need to do is get this connector apart, see if I can get these pins out of here and clean this corrosion up. And I don't know if I could, I was able to get it to go down to zero at one point. I was trying to disassemble this connector, but you can see there we're down to 12. 12 mega ohms, 20 mega ohms, it's just kind of dancing all over the place. So what I'm going to do is get to work on this connector. I'm going to spray it down with a uh, little bit of contact cleaner that we've used before, WD-40 contact cleaner. And we're going to see if we can get this corrosion cleared out of here. And then that meter should drop to zero and stay to zero, uh, at least until we get the uh, replacement mirror reassembled. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on trying to get this connector apart or access to it as best as I can and then uh, I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So I thought it might be useful to show this to get these pins out of this connector. This is the outside cover that locks into the door module. So you kind of have to separate the sides of this connector a little bit and then this whole piece will slide out sideways from this retaining tab. Once you have that, you can see you've got access to the pins underneath of the actual connectors that you can just lightly depress and then pull the pins out. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get these some of these pins pulled out, uh, get them cleaned up, get this green crusty corrosion out of here, and it should take care of our resistance problem. So I'm going to work on this, and I'll bring you back. Actually, to to show you what I'm talking about, actually, let me let me, let me show you one of these pin removals. So for example, the two circuits that deal 
in this case, in this, at least in this setup, with the defrost, with the driver's side mirror is on this side of the connector. And there's just two pins on this side of the connector, and this is the two that we're dealing with, at least, again, in this particular case. So all I'm going to do is come in here and depress or attempt to depress the metal pin that acts as a catch on that wire and then we should be able to get pin and all out of here you just gotta be careful because these pins are really small and if you break one then it won't hold into the connector anymore when you go to put it back in I still haven't quite gotten it depressed yet. I'm just using a straightened out paper clip in case you're wondering to get down in here. Yeah, it's still hitting its still hitting its stop. Okay, I need something a bit stiffer. Okay, just felt the pin move. So you can see what I was able to do there. I was able to kind of push down on that pin and push back at the same time. So it's kind of how you have to get them out. Just again, be careful about how much you mangle that uh, or play with that pin, that locking tab, because they're very small, they can break. And if they do that, then obviously they won't lock into the connector anymore like they're supposed to. With that being said, Again, I'm going to continue to work on this. I'm going to clean this up. You can see that our meter has reached open, which is what it should be reading, because I have this pin pulled out and it's no longer coming in contact with the, with the corrosion that's allowing it that connectivity. So I'm going to clean it up with some more contact cleaner and uh, probably take a little bit of red uh, Scotch-Brite just to clean, the, clean these connections up, and then I'll bring you back. One moment. You can see we got our uh, wiring harness reassembled. We had to depin pretty much the both pins for the defroster circuit for the rear view mirror. The red wire underneath, which I believe is a battery positive wire, a five volt wire. I believe it's voltage positive coming off the door controller. Uh, and the ground wire, the black wire on the bottom pin as well. Uh, in order to get that to uh, finally clear itself. So I took all the pins down, uh, scraped them down with a little bit of uh, red Scotch-Brite to get the corrosion off of them, hit them with the contact cleaner, as well as shot down the barrels of the connectors with the contact cleaner, and then finally used a little piece of unfolded paper clip to scrape the insides of the little plastic barrels that those metal tabs ride in to finally get the corrosion gone and the gone to the point that the meter no longer saw a mega ohm connection between the two leads for the uh, defroster circuit in the mirror and uh, I'll show you it again but I've verified that we're reading you know only seven we were only reading seven uh, zero ohms open those wires connected which is what we're looking for and we're reading seven ohms a steady seven ohms now with that heater circuit reattached so i just went ahead and put the uh turn signal slash puddle lamp back in you can kind of see how that sets in there where it just rests behind that edge like just like we did in the last video that's your locking tab that holds it in and again there's supposed to be a phillips screw there but the previous person that replaced this puddle light didn't put that screw back in so i don't have it to put back in i'm going to go ahead and make our electrical connection and we're going to see about getting this all snapped back together but what i want to do first still see a little bit of green crusty on there if you remember from when we did this now i sprayed it down a couple of times but i still see a little bit so i want to take the opportunity to hit this again 
I'm just going to take a, just gingerly take a piece of paper clip. I don't want to go too far down in that connector because I don't want to space that connector out. But I want to see just about scraping off any residual green corrosion or green crusties and maybe on the end of that connector. And it, make, it makes sense that these would get uh, subject to that. And, uh, just a little compressed air in case you want to help dry it off. And these are subject to the elements, unfortunately. go. So our puddle slash turn signal lights are reconnected. All we have to do is line this clamshell back up and what we can do is get this lower clip if you remember just to show it to you here again on the back of this housing on this side is that pin right you can see right there that locks into that tab there. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out of your view here for a little bit so I can get that pin to fall in. Okay, so I'm just gonna work work the trim around the puddle light, make sure that's seated. Yep, and that back pin sounds like it just clipped into place. I don't know if you heard that pop. So you go, our trim's all back in. And all we got to do is manipulate our mirror and see how best we can get in there to put our three uh, torque screws back into place. So I'm going to fight with that and I'll bring you back. One moment. Okay, so we got our screws back in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. When you go to take them out, if you push your mirror down, kind of get it off at an angle. This one back here in the corner, the top corner, is pretty straightforward to get out yeah you can see it right there you, you can get a pretty good straight shot on it with a with a torque screwdriver and that's what i'm using here i believe this is a t15 you know standard reach screwdriver will get it you can kind of again just go in through the corner you can get straight on with it now the two here at the end just kind of have to do your best to push the mirror off to the side as much as you can you can get a screwdriver in here, but to show you what happens is obviously you can't get onto it too straight. So if you're dealing with a straight screwdriver like I am, you kind of have to just get the best bite you can. This this threads in the plastic, so they're not very tight, at least on this model. That's just where I was saying if you had, you know, uh, a flexible Torx bit, or maybe at a Torx bit that had kind of like an S bend to it, you'd have a little bit better shape. But like I said, you can get enough perch on it hitting it sideways. Let me get you a light in here. So again, you can see it where it's at. Behind the mirror there, there's the one. There's the other. And you just kind of have to get, like, a, like I said, kind of like an angled perch on it. But you can get them out. I'm just going to push this mirror back into place, at least home position. So the last thing that we've got to do so I'm going to check the resistance on this one more time to make sure we've got this corrosion taken care of. And then we'll just slide our plastic cover back into place. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's get two of our Again, in case you're wondering where I'm getting my test leads from, I'll, I'll put a link in the description, but they're from a place called AES Wave. If you're looking for scopes or scope equipment or test leads, anything of that nature, they're definitely the ones that'll have them. Now, the particular kit I have, I'll warn you, it's, it's a little pricey, but it's nice to have in situations like this where you need... Uh, small probes, the probe of circuit, things of that nature. So I don't know if you can see that, there you go. 7.5 ohms now coming out of that connector. 
which is reading the resistance obviously of the wiring and of the heating element in that mirror but much much better than the old mirror got which was around anywhere between 2, 4, 10, 15, 20, 25 mega ohms uh, partially because of the connector and also partially due to the bad mirror because I know what you're thinking now that we've got the green crusties fixed in our connector and we're no longer seeing uh, a high resistance reading across those two pins we're going to measure the old mirror here again there we go you can see there we're not in mega ohms anymore but we're 20 plus ohms which is still out of spec for this mirror uh, I think the book, like I said earlier, the book states like 9 ohms, if I remember correctly. Uh, so although, again, like you obviously uh, can see, uh, the first resistance reading we were getting where it was showing mega ohms, a lot of that was because of the, con the corrosion on the connector itself. But now that we've got that cleared... We fixed a lot with our resistance meeting on this particular mirror, but you can kind of see that it's still all over the place and it's well in excess of what the book says, which is around 9 to 10 ohms. Now, to be fair, there we go. Yeah, it's actually a little loose as well, that connector. Let's change our alligator clips to be fair. Yeah, it's actually got a connection issue right there on the mirror itself. As I rock this, to show you what I mean, watch our resistance reading as I rock this pin. See, it just kind of jump all over the place. 500 ohms. 5, 400, down to 24, down to 15. So yeah, it was kind of all over the place. So again, we had two issues with this. We had a faulty connection on our mirror for a heater circuit, as well as corrosion on that pin that was high enough to you know, make it fail its, uh, its startup check whenever the key was put in the ignition. So long-winded way of saying and a long video way of saying that uh, we should now have this issue fixed when we install this back on the truck uh, we should be able to uh, engage our rear defroster as well as when we go to put the key in the on position and do our uh, scan tool checks hopefully the code for that uh, driver side side mirror is now gone with that being said if you if you found the content useful uh, please consider subscribing uh, we're again still con still continuing to grow the channel. I hope everybody has noticed the new channel art and the new banner art on the channel. Uh, that is thanks to a uh, fellow YouTuber uh, and subscriber that was gracious enough uh, to do that for us. Um, I will allow this individual to uh, leave a comment in the if they wish to do so. Um, uh, uh, laying claim to the artwork if they wish to also remain anon uh, anonymous that's okay as well but again a, a thank you to the individual that has done the new artwork for this channel uh you you, you know who you are and again many 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 thanks um but once again if you haven't if you haven't subscribed already and uh you've hung around this long through my rambling and you found the information useful uh please consider doing so again it, it does help the channel out tremendously and uh, allows us to continue to uh, put videos out like this and hopefully what uh, are helpful tutorials. With that being said, I'll let you go and I'll bring you back for the next one. Thank you much. Bye.